Hello there guys, Robert here. Got a uh, couple of things a wee bit different from uh, usual here tonight. So uh, just as a way of example, just to get started off, here's my uh, Nexus 4. Um, had this for a wee while now, it's quite nice. Um, seems to do its job just fine. Um, I've seen uh, it's currently having a wee bit of a hard time because I seem to have uh, filled up the uh, memory with um, well, all sorts of stuff. No, nope, that's the wrong screen. Don't you love it when you go to the wrong screen? No, nope. my goodness, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Right, storage. So, uh, current available, uh, 514 meg. Um, wow, I've just got this loaded up with so much guff for the moment. It's really struggling. Anyway, Nexus 4. Quite a nice wee phone. I've enjoyed it for a while. Um, I'll just put that down there and I'll bring something else into the screen. So, let's see what we've got here. It says Asus. Um, when I switch this one on, it uh, will come up and we'll see what it says. So, um, Intel inside. This is a Zenfone 5. It's uh, the new phone that's just been released somewhere around about March 2014. That's basically now. Um, there's not many people got their hands on these at the moment so this is uh, quite a cool thing to have access to. Um, just getting it started off here. I've not done any way of setting up. I've not even put a SIM card or anything in it fully yet. Um, but it's uh, quite a nice product. So I've charged it up a reasonable amount. Um, um, it uh, comes on, it shows up the time and everything as always. So uh, I've got the home button, so we've got swipe screen to unlock, no SIM card, emergency calls only. So swipe my finger and uh, up comes the menu on the screen. So uh, as I say, it's not configured yet, but we'll show you some of the new uh, features. So obviously you've got your Asus folder with all your Asus software, Power Saver, uh, Splendid. It's usually a video based application. Yeah, set your colour tone, um, set the default. Yes, so you can change um, saturation of the screen, um, you can change hue and tone, so it should be reasonable if you want to try to uh, use it for viewing videos and things, you might be able to colour calibrate it almost to a certain extent to match your monitor, so interesting, don't know if I'll use it. Uh, so there's a to do, so do it later, uh, power saver mode seems interesting. Smart savings, optimize saving, savings, and customize. So, ultra savings maximize battery life, disconnects from the network when the device is suspended. So, obviously, it goes offline when you uh, lock the device. Um, hmm. Optimized extends battery life, keeps the network connected. Seems a decent. Customized mode, into the settings on that. So, reading mode, brightness to all the screens. Power saving when listening to music, Skype, all sorts of things, IM and blah blah blah. Interesting set of features. Um, in fact, let me just go back in there because I just saw a power curve of some sort. So, um, it was obviously charging earlier on at some point today. It's been on standby for a couple of hours now, so it's just been literally sitting there. But, um, seems reasonable enough. Um, Let's just see what else is on the other screen. So we've got the camera, um, front and back facing camera. Uh, we've got turbo mode where it takes multiple shots uh, settings. So you've got um, white balance options. So we can go into uh, tungsten. So it'll make everything very pale at the moment. So I've got LED lighting back there. So um, I've got a 500 watt halogen across the room over there, over there. And I've got an LED up there, so the colour bounce is a bit weird in here at the moment, but anyway. So we can go back to the auto. Um, you can choose um, ISO from 50 up to 800. Um, seems to be flickering a little bit there. It's a bit noisy, 800. 200. Seems clean. I'm getting a bit of ripple from the halogen or something there, but not a problem. Put that back on auto. So we've got uh, exposure adjust, uh, two stops either way. Uh, optimization for auto on off, no idea what that is offhand. Camera setting so 8 megapixels, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, anti shake, 
Shooting mode, touch for shutter, self touch bur self timer, self touch, my goodness. <laughs> Burst, focus mode, touch to auto expose, face detection, video, white balance, all the usual, pretty much the same all again. Display smart brightness guidelines, so you can switch on looks like rule of thirds in the background there. Yeah, it's rule of thirds. Um, info on and off, review duration, so there's there's a shed load of settings there. You've got digital zoom available. Um, it seems to focus and shoot down to probably about two to three inches without any problems. There's an HDR button there, so um, on pressing that, it's definitely taken a bit longer to think about that. So I guess it just shot an HDR shot. Um, obviously, it's not going to show very much at the moment, but um, yeah, it's definitely HDR looking. It's a wee bit of pixely there. So it tried its best, it didn't do a particularly great job, but so be it. Um, so, um, camera looks pretty decent, there's a front and back facing camera, 8 megapixel on the back, 2 megapixel on the front, something like I think it is. Can't remember the details, look at the specs on the ASUS website. I'll put a link below probably. So you've got the Play Store, um, it's obviously not connected to anything yet, so I've not set it up. Probably the fairly standard uh, Play Store. Let's see what's in the all folders sort of drawer here. Um, so we've got Amazon Kindle's pre-installed browser. Um, it's another browser. Chrome's on it. There's a debugger. No idea what's going on with that. There's hundreds of options. Well, okay, not hundreds, but enough options. Um, it's an Asus custom thing, of course. Do it later. Um, Google Drive is there as an icon. Uh, E-Music File Manager. FM Radio. Hmm, FM Radio. Yeah, I was going to play with that earlier, but I never got around to that. Um, have I got a set of headphones here? It needs a set of headphones plugged in uh, to operate as the antenna. Um, and uh, that will then obviously give you radio just like so, some old phones used to do and things like that. It needs a headset plugged in. Um, so FM radio, gallery, Google, Google settings, hangouts, maps, messaging, movie studio, uh, MyAsus takes you on to the online, um, some online tools and things like that, support tools, product registration, products, technical inquiries, um, probably the sort of stuff that you're never really going to use, change passwords for, so it's all the stuff that you can do on the ASUS website. Um, so not the sort of thing people are typically going to use. Uh, you've got the people section, so that's where all your contacts will go. Uh, omelette, O-M-L-E-T, I have no idea what that is. Um, it's probably going to complain because it's probably an online application. Yeah, it wants a Google, a Google account again. Um, moving on to the next screen, play books, play games, play movies, play music, play newsstand. So it's got all the play Google Play apps and things. Setup wizard, um, that will take you through uh, your keyboard settings, choosing your language, choosing your, your Wi-Fi settings. There's some Wi-Fi there. Um, um, all sorts of account and sync stuff. I'm just going to cancel out of that. Uh, Google Voice Search, Sound Recorder, fairly standard. Uh, Zinio, no idea what that is, but you know, we'll just take it for granted that it exists. <laughs> um, so um, let's see what other options here. Lock apps, lock app settings, hide apps, manage apps. Um, Frequently used apps, very little in there. Um, go back to the home button, let's see what else we've got. We've obviously got messaging, uh, we've got the phone, uh, we've got a slightly stylized phone. So, 0131, yes, I'm in Edinburgh. 555, make up something in Leith, just down the road from me. Hello, Leith, how are you doing, Leithers? And um, we can move on to the contacts, just create new contacts, favourite numbers, groups, and things like that. Again, this is pretty much straight from the box. I've not even put a SIM card in it yet. Um, but it is uh, quite a, a cool wee device. So I'm going to uh, flip the thing over and uh, uh, show you the back of it. I'm going to just stop and start the recording again as I'm running out of time on this single recording. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I was going to take the back off and show you how it all works, but I didn't take the back off quite yet. You'll see it's got a curved back on it. Uh, I've got some label identifiers up there, so I'm not going to uh, show you those. 
Camera on the back, flash on the back, into one side, speaker grill at the bottom there, it's quite nice, really quite reasonable. Um, headphone jack on top, microphone on the top, microphone on the bottom, micro USB on the bottom as well, um, exactly what you would expect. Volume up, volume down and power, and that's pretty much you. Um, there is a little key slot on the side, I'd almost call it, um, it's designed for sort of putting your nail or something in to try to open the back. So if I just put my nail in there um, and click the back open, you'll hear it pop open and the back comes off in the usual sort of way. Try not to drop it. There we go. So um, here is the device itself. So you'll see inside here we've got the camera again. You've got a micro SD socket in there in the side. Uh, you've got dual SIM slots in this one, SIM 1, SIM 2, um, little speakers down there, and these things are all the aerials and antennas for different functions, so don't know exactly which one's which at the moment, not really paid much attention to that, but there's three sets of antennas there, it looks like there's probably another couple there, and this might be one as well. Totally cannot remove the battery, there's no obvious way of getting into the battery, it looks like it's going to be a case of taking out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 screws possibly to get into it. So it's uh, far from useful as far as battery removal goes. Uh, three buttons on the side that you can't really get access to, although you can touch them and wake it up I suppose. Um, but they're, they're sort of non-accessible if you don't have the back on the thing. Um, so it needs a back on it to be realistically usable. Um, overall, seems quite a nice device. Uh, I'll just put the back back on it again. So we'll just uh, clip that in. Um, if I put it on the right way around, it might be useful. So let's try that again. So that's the back clipped back on again. So micro USB in the bottom, microphone on the bottom. Um, little coin slot, um, headphone jack, microphone on top, um, power button and volume again. So Asus camera up here, looks like there's possibly an ambient light sensor or something right, looks like there's an ambient light sensor right there, I can see something sort of reflecting off of me. Uh, back button, home button, uh, list of apps button, can't remember what that's actually called, what's it called? What's it called folks? I can't remember. Anyway. So we're back in and it's powered up again, so um, let's uh, see, so if I swipe down from the top, I've got smart saving mode is on, so it tells me the date and the time, um, system notification area is clear, so let's just swipe down again. So now that it's completely cleared, we've got owner information, Wi-Fi, mobile data, auto rotate, sounds, GPS, airplane mode, smart saving, reading mode, Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth, auto sync, Miracast and Audio Wizard. Hmm, okay. So if we go into the main settings, um, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, dual SIM. So dual SIM card settings. Again, no SIM card in it at the moment, but SIM 1, SIM 2. Looks like there's enable buttons there, um, different number sort of things. Preferred calls for SIM 1, preferred network SIM 1. So it looks like it'll swap back and forward, although I don't know exactly the rules on that yet. Call settings, so phone ringtone, um, so we'll choose we'll choose a ringtone, let's see what that does, and uh, turn the volume up. So, uh, it's, so it's reasonably loud, um, different sim, different ringtones for different sim cards. Uh, vibrate when ringing, um, so um, reasonable enough there. Call rejection message, I'm in a meeting, I'm in a class, blah blah blah. Call rejection options. Headset settings for incoming uh, incoming uh, calls, so automatic answer, yes or no, to use this function connect to Bluetooth or wired headset. Auto answer call timer, okay. Uh, let's see connection alarm setting, home dialing, call duration, uh, 
so call duration seems to show a list of call duration as measured by your phone. It's the length of a call between two parties. It is measured differently depending on your carrier. <laughs> okay, so call duration per SIM card again, and you can choose it down to dates. So it's almost as if it's the uh, network data usage. Um, and you've got intermittent calls, receiving, coming calls, so it's SIP built into it as well. Um, quite liking these features. If I click on more, we've got airplane, airplane mode, we've got VPN, yes or no, tethering and hotspot, so USB tethering if it was plugged in, I guess. Portable Wi Fi hotspot, um, um, hotspot active as it vibrates. Um, I've called it Z Asus Zen Phone 5, I've set up WPA, um, there's the password key. Write that down, go on, it'll be deleted soon. 3EA3077 FF682. There you go, go for it. Uh, disable Wi Fi hotspot if inactive for 8 minutes. Uh, cancel. Bluetooth tethering. Um, share this phone's internet connection. Switch all that off again. Uh, mobile networks. Uh, data enabled, data roaming. Um, data roaming on different SIM cards. Again, it's a dual SIM card, so lots of features for that. Um, so sounds display, so brightness, um, auto brightness, bright, dark, bright, dark, the usual. We've all seen that before. Switch on auto and set it to sort of middle auto. Uh, daydream mode, screen, screen always turn off, turn off after 30 seconds please. Trans cover enabled, so if you've got a trans cover it will switch on and off. Mirror cast wireless display. Um, Switch it on and off, um, enable loopback video, all sorts, no, no mirror cast handy. Search for displays, uh, it's probably not going to find anything because there's none here. Um, home screen, lock screen, reading mode's weird, it just changes the colour of the display. So reading mode, and you can see, oh it's image and text, it's slightly yellow. Text mode, very yellow, okay, whatever. Um, I'll switch that back off because that's quite annoying. You colour calibrate your display, then suddenly you make it wrong when you're in reading mode. Okay, okay. So, um, let's see, where were we? Display storage. This unit's only got 4.65 gig available, and it's a, virtually a brand new straight from the box. So it's only uh, the smallest device. Um, not an awful lot on it, to be perfectly honest. Very little in the way of memory, but... Um, so battery mode, uh, going to battery you'll see it's been sitting pretty passive all day. It sat for, it sat powered up in my bag for about 5-6 hours and the battery's only gone down about 1 or 2% so uh, the power saving mode seems to be pretty good to be perfectly honest. Um, so like apps, there's very little going on in there. Um, Asus customised settings, dual, dual app settings, multitasking support, so we've got all sorts in there. Uh, screenshot format, JPEG or PNG, enable trans cover, I think we were right in there. Glove mode, allow you to wear any pair of gloves and still use your device. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Um, and Nexus 4 does that with gloves on anyway. Um, location access on and off, security, encrypt your phone, make visible password, all the usual, all the usual Android settings in there. Um, backup and reset, language and input, fairly standard, there's an ASUS keyboard in there uh, vibrate when placed, or capitalization uh, text to speech um, let's see, date and time accessibility about, so we'll go into about uh, system update, the system is up to date it's not going to find an update because it's not connected to anything um, internet connection error, as expected Android 4.3 currently on this one um, so status, we've got battery status, battery level, network unknown, signal strength, roaming, all the usual things, IP address and uh, serial number stuff in there as well. Software information, again tells you the build, it's 4.3 and it's the baseband versions, things like that, so all sorts in there. Um, Pretty decent set of information. Um, GPS version, Wi Fi version, Bluetooth touch panel, battery version, battery version? Okay, whatever. And Asus model number, I'm just covering the screen because I don't want the serial number or anything to show up here. 
uh, status updates. Um, okay, so um, yeah, seems pretty good actually. Um, quite impressed by it. Um, probably going to play with this a little bit more over the next uh, day or two, get more familiar with it. Um, basically there's three core screens at the moment. Seems a fine little phone. Um, let me get my SIM card in it and see how it gets on. Um, hopefully it's good. Right, that's enough video. I'm seriously running out of memory now. I'm going to pause this before it dies. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed this. See you later.